So in this lesson, we are going to look at how to write the equation of parabolas given information. I have three hints for you. This is the best way you should do it. So the first thing, hmm, of course she's going to say this, draw a picture. Draw a diagram so you can see what's going on. The second thing you should do is write the standard, write the standard form equation. So you have to decide if it's x squared or y squared. Your picture will help decide that. And then the third thing is you have to plug in the vertex. Plug in the vertex. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This first one here is the equation of a parabola. Okay. The vertex is 1, 0. V for vertex. I still don't know if it's opening up, down, left, right. That's not enough information. But it does tell me the focus is at 6, 0. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, that is the focus. Oh, well, now I know a lot. Okay, now I know that the parabola has to surround the focus. Okay, so is this going to be an x squared or y squared? This is definitely going to be a y squared equation. Looking at this right here, from vertex to focus, that is p. The p is 5. Okay, P is 5. I know that the P formula is 1 over 4A. And what's P? P is a 5. So we've got 1 over 4A. I will times both sides by 4A, cross multiply. 20A equals 1. You have to isolate the A, and so A is 1 20th. Okay, I've got my picture and I've got some information. Now I have to get that standard form equation for y squared. The equation of a parabola opening left and right has the y squared. So it's x minus h equals a times y minus k squared. And do we know the vertex? Yep, the vertex is 1 comma 0. So it's going to be x minus the number 1. Did we calculate A? Yep, we got 1 20th. And then the Y minus 0 is just Y squared. That's how you do parabolas. Uh, I think I'm going to change this up here to plug in vertex and A value. Because you need the A value as well as the vertex to finish off the problem completely. Okay, let's do another one. Write the equation of the parabola. If the focus is at 6, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, and that is F for focus. Okay, that's not the vertex. I still can't tell which way it's opening up down. How about the directrix? The directrix is a hoy, y equals negative 2. That's right here. Okay, so that's the directrix. So if the directrix is going like that, and that's the focus, that means that the vertex must be right in the middle of those two. So it must be at negative 5. Here's the vertex. And it has to surround the focus. So a couple things we know from this picture. Is it opening up, down, left, right? It's opening up and down. And that means that you have to get the equation with the x squared. Uh, the vertex, I know that from the picture, too. The vertex is 6, comma, negative 5. No, negative 3. That's negative 3. And, oh, I could, I could find a p-value from here to here. The p-value is, careful, it's going down, negative 1 because it's going down. Okay, a little star there. Going down. Remember, we said that the p's value will be negative if you go down or left. Okay, so the p-value is negative 1, and that's 1 over 4a, so let's cross-multiply again. Negative 4a equals 1, and a is negative 1 fourth. Okay, I think we're ready for our equation. I've got the vertex and the A value.
Since this is opening up and down, it's the x squared equation, so it's the one that starts y minus k equals a, x minus h quantity squared. Plus, the more you write these, the, it's kind of like studying. You keep writing it, you'll have it down for the test. y minus negative 3 is plus 3. The a value is negative 1 fourth, x minus 6 quantity squared. It seems like these are going a little faster than the other shapes did. Okay, last one. Write the equation of a parabola. Oh, that passes through a point. Remember, a point is like an x comma y. Okay, the vertex is 3, negative 2, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to make this really big. That's the vertex. It has a line of symmetry, y equals negative 2. y equals negative 2, that's the line of symmetry. Hmm. That means the parabola must be either going left or right. Now, there was one more hint. It did tell us that there was a point 1, 0. Okay, this is just a random point 1, 0. That means that the vertex is here. The parabola must be going like this, being sliced down the middle, and going like this. So if I look at the picture, I know that the vertex is at 3, negative 2. It's opening left and right, so this needs the equation where it's y squared. The standard form of that equation would be x minus h equals a times y minus k quantity squared. And then we're going to plug in what we do know. So we're now going to plug in the information that we have. As of, well, with some problems we've done before, um, people are saying, well, I don't have my a value yet. Let's just write down what we do have. The vertex here would be x minus 3 equals a, y minus negative 2 is plus 2 quantity squared. So you're right. We haven't found all the information. We don't have the a value, but we do have um, a point. We do have this point right here, which is an x comma y. So we've seen this a couple times before. When you have a point, you can plug in that x value or that y value, and then we can calculate the a value. So 1 minus 3 equals a. The y value is 0 plus 2 is 2 quantity squared. Negative 2 equals 4a divide by 4, and a is negative 1 half. So we are now ready to write the equation of the parabola. So we're going to take this equation right here and add our a value. x minus 3 equals negative 1 half times the quantity y plus 2 squared. And that is the equation of the parabola. Okay, the last thing ever that I'm going to teach you, I guess, is um, a recap of eccentricity. So remember, eccentricity, the letter E right there, is the distance from center to focus, which is R sub F, R sub F, and it's over the distance from center to major, R major, major, or, or the transverse vertex, which is R trans. So if you're talking about an ellipse, you're going to do R major. Talking about a hyperbola, it will be R trans. Okay, so let's just recall these formulas here. Eccentricity equals, uh, let's see, let's do all the ellipse ones first. Okay, so ellipse formulas. It's R sub F over R. Who do I care about in an ellipse? I care about who's major. And another formula you have to remember for him is r sub f squared. So I know it's r squared and r squared. Ellipse equations have pluses, so this formula gets the minus, and we do have to be careful how to subtract. You have to make sure you do major, minus, minor. Okay, and let's refresh um, all the hyperbola ones. Hyperbolas have eccentricity rf over r trans. So when you're doing a hyperbola problem, I care about who is the transverse. It doesn't matter who's big or small, it matters who the transverse is. And r sub f squared also has two radii. The hyperbola has a minus, 
in his problem, so this formula is going to get the plus. And it doesn't matter who goes here, x and y, you don't really care about major, minor, it doesn't matter because it's a plus. Eccentricity of a circle, remember this? The eccentricity of a circle, a perfect circle is zero. The eccentricity of this perfect circle, and every circle in the world, is a perfect zero. Easy to remember. Eccentricity of an ellipse. Okay, eccentricity for him is going to be between 0 and 1, not equal to 0, not like a circle, not equal to 1. Okay, so they could be like this. Now this one's pretty circular. Okay, so this one is approximately 0, really close to 0. Okay, maybe 0 0.001, something like that. And the flatter the pancake, then the closer and closer it's about 1. Okay, or probably, probably something like 0.998, something like that, almost 1. But if you're 0, you're a circle. Now, what if you're a equal to 1? Well, then you're a parabola. Okay, so if you are a parabola, your eccentricity is 1. All parabolas have eccentricity 1. Now, what about hyperbola? The hyperbola uh, eccentricity is greater than 1. So I have a couple of examples here. This one looks pretty similar to like a regular growth pattern of a parabola. His eccentricity is about 1, but it's got to be more than 1, so maybe 1 1.001, something like that. And this is a big wide one. Okay, the big wide one, so this would maybe have about 5, something like that. Okay, just so you are aware, there are four categories for eccentricity calculations. So when you're doing the eccentricity, you can double check that you got the right one because it's in these four categories. Okay, so we're going to calculate the eccentricity here to verify the type of conic section. Okay, so to verify. So verify means to show or to prove. So I'm looking at this first one here, and it's a hyperbola. Okay, so I, I'm going to verify hyperbola. Okay, so a couple things we have to do. We have to get the focal radius squared. Since this is a minus, his formula gets plus, and it doesn't matter how you do this, 4 plus 21, so r sub f is going to be 5. So eccentricity for hyperbola is focal radius 5 over which one? I don't care about major, minor, I care about transverse, so it's going to be 2. Is that a good answer for hyperbola? 2.5? Yes, because it's supposed to be more than 1. Okay, let's calculate to verify. Verify means to show all the work and prove that it's true. I'm noticing that this shape right here is an ellipse, so I really hope that all my work verifies that. r sub f squared for an ellipse, it's r squared minus. And to do subtraction, we'll do the big one squared minus the small one. So r sub f equals the square root of 5. Okay, so eccentricity. Eccentricity for ellipse is radical 5, focal radius over the major radius. The major radius is, is it 2 or 3? Well, 3 is bigger, of course. Um, is this number between 0 and 1? Radical 5 is 2 point something over 3. Correct. Okay. So can you state the eccentricity for all four shapes, and do you know the ranges of their values? Great job, class.